Hey, it's Andrew Downs. I'm proud to support Three Beards Media, and I would love to work with you. If you need merchandise for your company, organization, band, softball team, whatever, I can help. From name brand apparel to promotional items, large orders or small, online stores and more, I can help your brand stand out. AKC Marketing is local, based in Johnston, and we are an employee-owned business, so our costs are low and our turnaround times are fast. But most importantly, we give you personal service to make sure you get exactly what you're looking for. Email me at Andrew at AKC kcmarketing.com or find me on social media and let's make some cool stuff together now sit back and enjoy this three beards media podcast Welcome back to In the Side of the Storm, where we talk all things cyclones. We are coming to you live from the AKC Marketing Marketing Studio with Andrew Downs and still sponsored by Revelton Distillery out of Osceola, Iowa. I am Dave Larson here with my storm team partners and cyclone greats, Brett Curvey and Marcus Pfizer. How are you, gentlemen? Alive and well. Doing well. Happy Father's Day, fellas. Yeah, to everybody. Storm We're off on a hiatus. For, uh, we're going to hiatus for a little bit over the summer. We have a special guest with us tonight. Iowa State women's basketball coach, Bill Finley. Coach, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, hard hard to, hard to uh, not to be excited about the two Hall of Famers over here. So uh, <laughs> I, I got, yeah, I've been here so long, I got to watch them play. Not A lot of the people that listen to your show have heard, heard about them. I watched it up close and personal. So it, this is fun. Well, and here hey, I am. We, I feel like I'm hearing three Hall of Famers, Coach. You got to include yourself in that, oh, in that list as well. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, so, without a doubt. Yeah, we yeah. already know that. So I'm I'm gonna go back. Coach, have you replayed that Stanford game? Or, or is that one out the window? Uh I have not watched the video of it. Um I get asked a lot, um, you know, when did you forget it or when did you move past it? Never. Um, I think you you don't do that. There's certain games that you know you reflect on and I am very proud of our team, very proud of you know the the way we played and against the great Stanford team. And, and I know you guys have already heard this story, but, you know, to have Austin Arnott and, and Brock Purdy at the games uh, with their beautiful brides and, and Brock talked to our team after the Stanford game. And, and, you know, I think that was a really big thing for us because obviously the disappointment of being so close at end your season. Uh, but to hear the message that those two guys you know, share with our team about being a cyclone and representing uh, our school was really important. And I think it, it, it closed the deal the way it should have, but uh, very proud of uh, what we've done. And 87, 81 is on the scoreboard in our practice, Jim. So uh, uh, I guess we haven't forgotten about it too much. Well, that's my question. Does that add fuel to the fire for this season? Because as a, you know, I tell you what, as a fan sitting on my couch, I'm yelling, I'm screaming at the at the end of the game. And it was pretty late for us when that game was on, too. Yeah. And all I could think of as a coach, boy, I want to get back on that horse right away. And w- were you in that same position, or did you need that little bit of time here to, to, to let things mellow out a little bit and say goodbye to those seniors and welcome into this new, cl- this new class? No, I mean, you, you really don't have a lot of time. I think, if, again, you, you in the world we live in, um, the finality is, is amazing. Like you go through the whole season and, you know, Brent and Marcus could tell you, like you do all this work and all of a sudden it's over. Like literally right. it ends immediately. It's not like you phase into it or, Hey, we're going to, 
hey, you know in two weeks, whatever. Every team loses their last game except for the team that wins the national championship. But when it happens in the moment, the the, the investment – I always talk about the teams that I've been around that are really good, they're invested. They're not just interested. And when you're invested, it hurts. It should hurt. And there's a lot of people crying, and that's okay. And um, But I do think we have a group of kids, a lot of them are back, that – um, you know, understood that and like, okay, you, you want to play at that level. You say you want to play at that level. Are we going to do it in June, in July, in August, you know, so that when we get to that, you know, the next time, you know, we feel we can, we can do one more thing. And that's, you know, that's, you know, you talk about next step, you talk about next 40 minutes, you talk about the choices that we all make. So um, it's not something that we've dwelled on uh, as a negative. I think it's more, Okay, we we showed up. We played a great team um, on the road in a great game. A lot of people say it was the best game of the women's college tournament as far as entertainment was concerned. So I think our kids handle it the right way. We have a lot of maturity in that regard. So we feel good about uh, the way we started the summer. Well, and I would argue you played two incredible games back to back. You played. Brendan Freeze's Maryland team and then had a chance to face off against Stanford. I mean, those were yeah, they, we, we played an incredible game and a half. The, the first half against Maryland was, yeah. wasn't necessarily our best, but it took a uh, lot. Yeah. No, they were both great games. Um, very entertaining. Both team, you know, all, all the games were, were played at a high level, very skill oriented. Uh, so yeah, very, very proud of our team and uh, excited that, uh, you know, they got to see that, you know, when we go into, the season, our practice card, I always have the, you know, selection Sunday at the bottom of our practice card. You know, I, that's what basketball teams do. You know, it's, uh, you, you try and get ready for that moment in time when you you hear your name called. And it's not just about your team. It's, it's about your school. And there's so many things that go into it. It's obviously I'm a basketball person, but it's the greatest three weeks of the year for me. Uh, besides Christmas with my grandkids, it's probably the best thing ever is March Madness. So uh, to be a part of it and to represent Iowa State and to watch what the guys are doing, it, it was it was a lot of fun for about two weeks. Well, and I know we talked a lot about the women's team throughout the season, and uh, you know Marcus in particular. I think we've all grown an affinity for for your players and for. Um, Audie Crooks and seeing what she's done as a freshman. How, how do you put into words her freshman season? Man, that, that's a hard one. I, I think Audie was, was someone we knew um, was going to be a good college player. To her credit, she got better a lot quicker than we thought. Um, she, you know, she actually talks every day about growth. That's her, that's her word. Is I'm going to get, I'm going to grow every day. Um, she has amazing hands, amazing feet. Uh, you know, I think obviously it was to go from Algona Garrigan High School, small town, 1A school to the Big 12. And uh, the way she did it, uh, the way she committed to conditioning, uh, the way she committed to being coached, uh, I was could not have been more proud of her. And her numbers backed that up. And, you know, oh, by the way, in your first NCAA tournament game, you, you, you put 40 on Maryland. And, um but that's what she's like every day. She shows up, she's engaged. She, she gets her right responsibility to play at Iowa state. She's an in-state kid. Um, she has tremendous support from home, uh, was raised in an amazing way. And uh, we're just lucky that, uh, you know, she's a part of our family, but uh, I, I, I knew she'd be good. Dave, no, no. Anyone who said she'd be this good as a freshman, they, no, they, they no one thought that. So really proud of her work. And, and she did the work that it took to to be a good player. And, uh, you know, when you like these guys know when you come in as a true freshman and play at this level, no one feels sorry for you. First time in her life she ever played against anyone her own height. So, I mean, there were so many nuances to what she had to do, but uh, really proud of her. Well, Marcus, you've told told us many stories about your sort of welcome to the big time basketball with you your freshman season at Iowa State. Right, absolutely. I mean, it, it was the exact same way for me. Um, you know, l like Coach said, in high school I was a shot blocker. I mean, I averaged six, seven, eight 
block shots a game. And then once I got to college, it was man, it was, it was 0.5. It was hard to get to one. <laughs> one I don't shot think. To block. I don't know if Marty got to 0.5. <laughs> man, it, it was it was just a, a, a total difference. And you know, like like he said, you know, playing against guys your height, um, your strength, your speed more athletic and all of that, you know, I, I say all the time, you know, Tony Rampton and, and um, Clay Edwards were the, the biggest two nemesis of me, you know, in in my freshman season, but it taught me a lot. It taught me a whole lot. Um, it made me get in the weight room. I understood how much strength I needed to put on, um, how much faster I needed to be, uh, attention to detail and everything. And those guys taught me a lot. And, and without a doubt, you know, where we were my freshman year and as we continue, continue to build on. Um, I say all the time, you know, Coach Finley teams made me <laughs> want to be better because they were so good. Um, they were so good. And I didn't want to be, you know, the team that wasn't, you know, representing the organization or the, the university as good as the women team were. So every time they got done practicing, it was our turn. It was It was for me to go out there and try to get better. And, you know, hopefully I was able to do that. Yeah, and Coach Floyd's going to make him play defense too. So, <laughs> Bright didn't do that much. Bright didn't do that much in Louisiana either. So, <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I mean, I didn't have to be in a shot blocker. <laughs> well, and Marcus used to play uh, at the rec center, right, with a couple members of the women's team. Coach, did you know this? Well, well, my freshman year, uh, when we first came in, me and Megan Taylor, you know, we were freshmen going over to the red, just getting shots up, um, getting to know each other and things like that. And, you know, I was a post player. I like my jump shot was nowhere near where it was mid sophomore to junior year. And Megan was always a shooter. And so we used to play, you know, horse or pig or whatever you want to call it or 21. And man, she used to just light me up. And it got to the point to where I, Listen, I'm gonna have to start posting you up and putting you in the basket. <laughs> yeah. I'm not making these you, threes. You, you didn't make, have to tell Megan to shoot make twice, one. Marcus. Huh? You, have, uh, Megan, you didn't have to tell Megan to shoot twice. She she, she knew how to shoot. Like, right? <laughs> she was lighting it up, and so it got to the point like where I told her, "Girl, I'm gonna start posting you up. You keep on beating me." She beat me like six, seven times in a row. But you know that's 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 all in fun and games when we first come in as freshmen trying to learn. You know the system, trying to learn everything. Everything is new. You know you're you're really thrown thrown into adulthood that that of which you've never experienced before. And then you then we got coaches that are, you know, demanding so much of us um, day in and day out. It was it was really a time for us to to try to figure things out. And you know we had success after after that. And I, and I think what happens, Dave, too, is and, and Marcus and Brent could probably say speak to similar things is. Especially in the summer, you know, when you're in Ames, you, mm -hmm. it's the athletes. There are not a lot of people That's here. It. Yeah. And it's like, okay, what are we doing? Well, I'll go hang with you. And I see you in the mm -hmm. dining hall. I see you at the rec center. I see whatever. So, and, and a lot of them are away from home for the first time. And, and, and like, you know, these guys said, like the coaches are like, no, you got to do this. You got to get up and lift weights and you got to run. And it's a whole different world athletically but i think even as adults you think about us as adults if you took a new job you're not going to walk in there the first day june 10th and go i'm i'm happy i'm comfortable it it takes some time and when you share that with the other athletes like okay i'm not the only one that's miserable homesick mad at my coach i mean <laughs> that that that's part of growing up and and i think the that's the challenge especially for a young player is that summer, that first summer is really hard, really mm -hmm. hard. It's just so different. I mean, I'm sure for the guys, it's like, I mean, the food's different. The the music's different. The, where do I get my hair done? Where do I, like, haircut? Like, it, it, there's there's so many little things that I think the average person does. They, they show up on Labor Day weekend on a Saturday and or, or Hilton, you know, when November comes, they're like, oh, you know, this is easy. The, the, the work that goes on to get to that point is it is really hard, especially for a young person who comes to Ames from an area that's not like Ames. And I think that's even a bigger adjustment for a lot of people. 
So what have summer look uh, workouts been looking like thus far? Yeah. I think it's still pretty early, right? Yeah, we just started a week ago. Um, we get, um, just so everyone knows, uh, we started summer school June 10th. Uh, and we get eight hours a week with our players, uh, four hours of basketball, four hours of strength and conditioning. And so we're doing something every day. Like, like today's 45 minutes. We do individual workouts. We're very skill oriented in the summer. Um, our big thing is get yourself in condition, uh, do what the, the strength coach needs, uh, get, get your skill set ready. Uh, you know, just be, be re ready as a team. Obviously, the portal has created a new level every year. We got to get to know your teammates again every year. Uh, so it's it's been good. Uh, you know, we just got through our first week. We go we go three weeks. We give them ten days off, and then we go four weeks, and then they're off three weeks before school starts. So, um, you know, so far so good. You know, there's no games being played, so I, I don't get as stressed out as I used to when I was younger. Uh, they play pickup. I'm like, I don't even want to watch. I don't care. Throw it, throw it, <laughs> throw it all over the building. Miss shots. We'll, we'll figure it out. But uh, uh, it's good to get him here and uh, just ease into the process of of being a, a Division One basketball player. So well, I can't tell you, I can't tell you the ladies don't like those individuals because that that side of it all is is the is the part in the summer. You don't want to do. Everyone wants to hoop. Everybody want to get up and down and work on the things that we're not going to do in the game. <laughs> but those individuals, those three on threes, and all of that, man, that right there, you you watching the clock the whole time that you're there. So yeah. I can imagine how that is. Mar Marcus knows. Like, I got a lot of people looking up at that clock. <laughs> Everyone's like, it's only 45 minutes. Oh I my mean, god, we are busting it for 45 minutes. I mean, you're ball handling and you're in a defensive stance right. and you're shooting and there's pace, there's tempo. Um, yeah. They, you know, they're all like, Hey, we need to play pickup more. Yeah. Just kind of <laughs> screw. We can just screw around and jog up and down the court. Yeah. But no, we do that twice a week and it's, it's the hardest 45 minutes that they have because you mm -hmm. just, you're teaching pace, purpose, um, skill set, um, terminology uh, that we use that, you know, a lot of kids, you know, every program is different. So whether it's a play call or how we adjust to things. So uh, staff does a great job. It's, it's a great learning thing for us. And uh, I think our players, as they evolve into it, they understand these are the things you need to work on on your own. And hopefully we're doing that. You talked a little bit about the portal. How has that it changed your I guess your approach with teaching over the summer during the, during the season itself. I mean, I can imagine that do you get on players like not saying that you used to, but I think that's a, maybe a natural question that a lot of us have because we grew up in an era where, you know, you don't drink water at practice during football right. practice, right, Brent? Or, you know, <laughs> no. we're, we're couldn't, now couldn't have your hands on your head. None of that stuff. Oh, well. Yeah. It's so much <laughs> different now. Has your approach with your teaching changed? Yeah, it's different. I, I still think players respect um, and, and want to be coached, and they want to be coached hard. If they're treated fairly, they understand why they're doing it. I think, Dave, the question I get a lot more is not the question, but you can tell they want to know why you're doing it. It's not the old way of it's my way or the highway. It, it, those days are over, and right. they they see what's going on. They they Our players live in a different world. Uh, they live in a TikTok quick um, kind of environment. So for us, it's more about this is what we're trying to get done. Uh, you know, you can't just not terrible grammar, not coach them because you're afraid they're going to leave. If, if you're doing that, then then we're all wasting our time. Um, the portals here. Uh, the one thing I, I would say that we've all adjusted to and it's been hard. I mean, for me, especially, done this for so long. There's no bring Marcus in, bring Brandon as a freshman. They work hard, they develop, they make get a jump shot. Brent learns how to play a different whatever, and then when they're juniors and seniors, they're pros. Those days are over. If it doesn't happen early, they're gone. So you just you build your roster literally year to year, and 
even our fans have been like, why did that kid leave? Well, they got paid more. They, they want to, they get that someone promised them more shots. Um, so what you really have to do is embrace the now. And that sometimes that's hard. I mean, and, and so you're, you're in that cycle of, we got to get this done today. Let's focus on this team, knowing that there's going to be changes and, and the whole world is going through it. Uh, the college athletic world, um, NIL. Now we're getting into revenue sharing. Marcus and Brent are like, I'm like 10 years too old, man. man what? I'm worried. Like my, my grandson's 10 years old. I'm like, dang it. You know, I wish he was 16 because you know, if you're in that window right now, you're, you're going to do okay for yourself. And uh, so there's so many things that are different, but no, we, for Dave, for us, it's still your culture is your culture. You treat people with respect. You show up on time. You do your job because that's what Iowa State fans deserve and, and expect. You know, we're a Midwest, hardworking part of the, the country, and, and we're not going to change that. So if a kid leaves because of that, they probably shouldn't have been here in the first place. And, Coach, you've created that, that moniker, the Iowa State way. It, is that something you developed just as you were setting into the, into the university and, and came up with or. I, yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, we were sitting how's there. That your North star. Yeah. You're, you're, you're sitting there, you're trying to like, all right, what's, what's something that, that, you know, every coach, every coach talks about culture, family, you know, for us, it was like, all right, what are we going to be about? And when I came to Iowa state, um, our men's basketball program was really good under coach Floyd. Um, Football, Dan McCartney and I came in at the same time. And if you weren't ready to get your juices flowing around Coach Mack, then you were making a big mistake there. And we just wanted to figure out a way. And for us, the Iowa State way was what are we going to ha- say every day so that people uh, – attitude of gratitude, respect for everyone. We're lucky to be here. We get to be here. We don't have to be here. Um, I read a really good article about Coach Tomlin from the Steelers and he said, I want volunteers. I don't want hostages. And it was kind of like, who wants to be here? And again, what I tell every recruit, every single one, this is a phenomenal place. But it's not for everyone. Ames isn't. Um, women's basketball isn't. Uh, Coach Fenley isn't. But if you're one of those people that really – and you, what you're seeing now, um, you know, because of what happened with Coach Floyd, Coach Stacy, Coach McCarney – um, you know, what Jamie Pollard has figured out. And, and now you have with TJ, Coach Campbell, uh, Kevin Dresser, Christy Johnson. Uh, we have an athletic program that is really good. I mean, it, it, across the board, it's never been better than at any time that I've been here. But I think you just, again, you have to be able to look yourself in the mirror and go, this is what we're about. We are going to embrace who we are. We are not going to apologize for what we're not. And if that works for you, great. If it doesn't, we're going to root for you unless we have to play against you. And that's kind of the way we go about it. <laughs> hey, I got to ask Marcus, how many times, and I, I showed my grandson because I knew I was going to be on with you guys. I already, I already talked to Brent about his his, his pick <laughs> six in Colorado. And yeah. You know if we'd make it to the end zone or not. <laughs> how many times have you seen the video and I showed it to my grandson, you dunking on Chris Mim? How many times have I seen it over the course of – that is like, there's been about, if you said pick your top five highlights from watching a men's game at Hilton Coliseum, him flushing it on Chris Mim in Texas has got to be an all-time high. I, I, would, I, would say, I, don't, I, I would say maybe at least a thousand. Like, I, I don't <laughs> today? Yeah, at least a thousand. Today? Huh? A thousand times today? No, no, no. Today, I'm no. I'm joking. I'm like, oh, I'd, oh, okay. I'd put down no, I put um, that on loop on my phone. <laughs> for, for, for me, like it's such a great moment, and it, it was such a great moment in a time for, you know, the Hilton fans, Iowa State fans, and everything. But I, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I was so locked in at that point; it was just basketball. Um, we were we were holding, we were stalling, and the shot clock got down low. And at that point, I was just making a basketball play, going to the basket. I'm not even necessarily sure if I'd known it was Chris coming 
I wouldn't have done something different because I, actually I just, you know, got to the basket before him and rose over him. And he, you know, unluckily got there a little bit too late. Um, Cause I mean, I've, I've gotten in ones like I would have tried to dunk on him differently than the way it actually happened. Um, but I was just so locked in at that point. We had that, that run with them, Oklahoma, Oklahoma state, and we were all tied close to, and I wanted to be, you know, not a tight uh, first place to win the Big 12. I wanted to win it. So I was just so locked in. It was just playing basketball. But, yeah, I see it. I don't I don't personally go back and watch it because it's one of those, you know, you know, if you do something spectacular that you expected to do spectacular, that's a big thing for you. I hate to bust everybody bubble, but to me that wasn't a big thing because it was just a basketball move. Like I – I dunked on Doug Gottlieb when he tried to pull down my shorts. That was more enjoy- or enjoyable than dunking on Chris Mann because, you know, I knew Dougie was down there and, you know, the stuff that he did in basketball. But that whole thing with Chris, it was just a basketball move, and I was just going to the basket to, to, to make a play, and it just worked out, you know, the way it worked out. The, the dunk against Kansas, my sophomore year, this all over posters, those type dunks is more, you know, meaningful to me winning that game. Beating right. Texas and dunking on him, that was just – I needed that W really, really bad. And he's just fo- – unfortunately, was in the way. Unfortunately, he was in the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Marcus, if you were going to dunk on Chris Mim a little bit differently, how would you have dunked on him? Because that was as vicious um, as they come. Well, it, that was one of those, like, little stretch. Like, I've, I've always been, a, a, like, a power leaper. You know, even at the time when I was in college, you know, 255, 260, what – you know, my, my vertical was 38 and a half right at 39. Like I was, I, I wasn't a flyer, but I was a, a power leaper. So I would have gotten closer to him and tried to get like an N1 to try to get him closer to go over the top of him to N1 dunk it. At that point, like I said, I was just trying to get to the basket. And if I get that close to the basket, I'm going to dunk. I don't think I really saw him until he, until he really met me at the rim. And it wasn't until the dunk happened, I looked back and I actually saw that it was him. But again, it was just in the course of the game, and we were finishing the game. And then after the game, everybody made it, you know, being then once you saw the highlights and things like that. But at that point, man, I was so locked in, it didn't even matter who they could have brought the whole bench over. They wouldn't stop me from getting to that bat. <laughs> it, it looked, it looked like uh, my grandson told me he's ten. It looked because he just saw the highlights. It looked like the Kobe lob to Shaq in the nah, NBA playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a good one. That you weren't you were getting as good a pass as, as you know, back then. <laughs> no, Mike Nurse probably couldn't have made that pass so nice. <laughs> he was gonna shoot it. He wasn't gonna shoot it. <laughs> he, I probably caught it off the rim if he missed it. <laughs> so Marcus still has a lot of passion. Any chance that we can get him and Audi Crooks together out in Las Vegas to work together? Oh, that'd be the greatest thing ever for Audi Crooks. I mean um, I I'm, I'm personally working on some things like right now to to try to get back there, you know, to get back to Ames. And you know, I don't know if she's going to be around in the summer. Um, if, yeah, that, if that happened in, in the next couple of weeks or so, or probably in a month or so before school start, um, to try to get back because it's been a couple of years since we've been back. But if if I'm in town, I'm that's definitely something I want to do. And and, and there's nothing strenuous anything like that like there's no rhyme or reason you can't change somebody's game but there's little things that i picked up like one of my um you know as we call ogs from when i was younger was um antoine james played the same aau uh program and he's from shreveport and and the little things that i got from him you know we both six eight right at six nine the little touch shots you know we're even though we can at time jump over the top or whatever but had, like I remember he had the two NBA games where he had 51 and 51, you know, back to back games. And I think they say he had the ball in his hand for less than a minute, you know, because as soon as he got it, he was going up with it. So little, little trick shots, little things like that. Um, we talked about the Stanford game, you know, obviously um, the, the uh, lottery pick or, you know, the, what's her name? Cameron Brink. What's yep. her name? Cameron uh, you know, yep. Her, yep. Yes. Her, her lint really bothered her because like yes. I said, that's yep. the first time she's probably ever played against somebody that, you know, that long and have that type limp. And it was the same way for me. I was trying to back in Tony Rampton. Tony was seven foot and Tony was just a jump hooks and everything. He was just, I'm like, what in the hell? So, so those type little things just show her like little things to, 
you know, get better at little things that she probably never thought about and, you know, just continues to work, work on from there because I'm, I'm definitely a fan without a doubt. No, that's true. I mean, that's one of the things that we've, we've talked with her a lot about is, you know, Audie's not going to grow a lot. I mean, height wise, she's not going to jump a lot more. So we got to be better with angles. And like I said, how does a right. six, eight guy score over seven feet? How does mm-hmm. Audie at six, two and a half score over six, five? Um, mm-hmm. Cause she's going to have to play against those kind of guys. And, you know, Yoki Lee at K-State six, six and, you know, what you saw on Cameron Brinks, like, you know, okay, that's the second player in the draft. Well, that tells you you got to be able to do something. Like, change your game, step away from the basket, um, have an angle, do some work ahead of time, you know, a little jump hook, go under the rim. Mm -hmm. There's things that we've started to work on, but those are things that you got to grow into. And, uh, you know, she she always told me that, you know, Coach, I've never – you know, luckily for us, the NCAA allows us – we have guys that can practice with us. So we have a couple of guys on our scout team that are six two, and so she gets to see something, but she'd never seen it in her life. I mean, literally, mm-hmm. when you come from out going to Garrigan, I mean, the tallest player she ever played against was six feet, ever, mm-hmm. and she just bully balls them. I mean, you, you know, she can really post up. She's physical, but but even when you're physical and the kid is behind you, he's mm-hmm. four or five inches taller with some length. I mean, Cameron Blank's arms, you know, she's six six, but she reaches to like six nine. Right. So it's like, okay, how do I get how do I get that ball over her? Mm-hmm. It's like teaching the guard to drive in. And you know, you see Steph Curry learn that high layup off the window because you got to shoot it over, guys. And mm-hmm. that's what Audie's got to learn. And and right. that's one of the things that's been a point of emphasis this summer. Yeah, and, and for me, one of the things like like you said, being I guess you want to say undersized at the position, you know, when you have guys that's typically 6'10", 6'11", 7' foot at the power forward and, and center positions because I played the five at Iowa State. One of the things I would do often is, is, you know, make a move or do something to get fouled. You know, if there's somebody that's bigger than me, get them in foul trouble. Even the, there was some moves that I have no idea where I was going with it, and I wasn't making a scoring move. I was making a move to get them to foul me because now you got one and now you got two. So if you got two and you got three, now your defensive problems is going to be a little bit different. You know, I, I had that a lot when I was in, in, in the pros against Tyson Chandler and Eddie Curry, like in practice. I had to find different angles and stuff like that. If I get you into foul trouble or things like that, now you, your defensive, the way that you play defense is a little bit different. And so those are some of the little things that, that I would – I will, you know, want to show her and teach her face up, make a hard move where, you know, they're not expecting you to, because like you said, she got get good feet, quick feet. You don't got to be super fast, mm-hmm. just quick and deceptive. One of the things that you say about me was being deceptively quick and, you know, just getting you out of position. And then if I get you out of position, I'm going to act like LeBron, like they say, I'm going to flop or move and they're going to call a yeah, foul. That's it. And then now I got you where I need to have you at. Right. And now the whole thing, the whole dynamic changes for me because if I'm strong and I'm backing you in, there's only so much you can do. Then I'm going over the top of the jump hook and getting the basket. Yeah, like when we played Stanford, we tried to, you know, again, you do it on the fly. But it's like we tried to get Audie to be ultra aggressive early. I'm like, if you foul Brink out, she can't guard you from the bench. Right. You know, so we're like let's let's like let's put her in, you know, in in, in a stressful situation and. Yeah, I thought she did okay with it, but that's that is something as you grow. It's like Brent's like he thought he got held every play. Mm-hmm. He's flopping, oh, yeah. right? Right? <laughs> no, I, did. All, I did. Oh, no, I did. <laughs> I got held every play. I did. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you told Coach Mack? Well, yeah, I tried, but you know, he wasn't hearing none of that. <laughs> did you play for Coach Nelly? Was he your defensive line coach? Yeah. Yeah. That was my guy. Yeah. 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 I bet well, you he didn't, yeah, he didn't yeah. want to listen to it either, did he? No, he just, you know. They saw it. They yeah. saw the holes. Yeah. They saw right. the holes. <laughs> they saw it. I want to hear that shit. Go sit down. It's on videotape, too. <laughs> That's it. Oh, we yeah. go you got you to you you play through that. Yeah, get yeah, to the court. Get, get the ball. Get the ball. But really, Audie Crooks presents a matchup nightmare for the teams that we're going against as well because no one has really seen a talent like her. And, yeah. and the force that she brings. I think that's yeah. something that, you know, we can continue – coach, you can continue to play for the next three seasons. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. Um, you know, you, you talk about 
the things she's got to learn. But and we we talk about, and that's the great thing about Audie. She wants to get better. And you're talking about a kid who's a freshman in college, averaged 19 and nine. Um, and and so it's like, you know, you're like, you got to get better. Yeah, you want to get better? Oh, absolutely. So you're right, Dave. It's it's you know people talk about it all times. Like you know, no one knows, you know. Uh, Maryland tried to front her and we, you know, we lobbed over and this team tries to double team her. And so what we tried to do, uh, we've always shot the three a lot, um, as you guys know, but like what we tried to do in the portal was add a couple more people that could space the floor. So it's like, all right, you want to come double? We're going to shoot the three. Uh, we're, we, we, we can put four people out there to great, create space for her. And then you had her and, you know, Addie Brown, who I think if it wasn't for Audie, Addie Brown would be the most talked about freshman maybe since Megan Taylor at Iowa State. Um, but she's right now she's playing with Audie. And, but those two together uh, have great chemistry. Uh, we, we run a lot of high-low stuff. Uh, they play really well together. Uh, Addie uh, learned the game. Um, you know, her older sister, Kennedy, was a really good college player, uh, just finished her career at Duke. So she came in with a, a little bit better understanding of this level. So those two together are what we're going to build our team around, and 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 they've done an amazing job. Although, do you risk losing Addie Brown to Matt Campbell? She seems to be like a she seems to have that football mentality. I love it. Yeah, she kind of <laughs> does. She got a little edge to her. She could be a tight end. Um, she wants she wants to make a play where people notice. She's not going to be on the line. Right. You know, she she wants yeah. to have the fancy gloves and the eye black and. She's going to go make a big play for you and score a touchdown. But I mean, I could see her being a tight end uh, for sure, but she's, she's very skilled. She comes from Derby, Kansas, which is a phenomenal high school football Mecca. They got, they have a lot of great kids come out of there, but you know, she's a tough kid. She's a, we, what we, we like to say, she's an old school baller. I mean, the kid just loves to play, loves to compete, uh, you know, loves to look at you. Like she gives our guys, our scout team guys a lot of grief because she she's gonna talk to you a little bit about yeah. what she did to you and yeah. she might hit, hit you a little bit and grab your jersey a little bit and but she's an amazing kid amazing player and uh, I think someone's gonna have a phenomenal career here. And you know another player I love that I think is less heralded but probably has um, a bigger impact is Ariana Jackson. Just she seems to be someone that can just do it all that that blends as needed to pick up whatever spot is needed. I think she's just scraping the surface with what yeah. she'll, she'll be able to uh, provide for the team going yeah, forward. Dave, every year, I, you know, I get asked, you know, you know, you need a surprise, you need someone to step up, whatever. Um, last year it was AJ. I mean, Emily Ryan missed the first half of the season. Uh, AJ is Cardinal. If you cut her, she is Cardinal gold to the bone. Her dad played football here. Her brother played football here. Uh, AJ loves the Cyclones. Her parents are amazing people. Her little brother, brother Braylon's going to be a phenomenal athlete, track, football, whatever. Just, I mean, the kind of people that just love Iowa State. And and the thing I've always said, you know, in recruiting, you know, you, you got to find, you have to find talented kids and whatever. You, you want to find a kid or two once in a while that, um, they didn't need to be recruited. They wanted to come. And, and and what I refer to it is they have an extra heartbeat. There's something about when AJ puts on an Iowa State uniform, it's different for her. It's different than most players. And uh, we're lucky. I mean, we're, you know, she got recruited by other people, but she, she was comfortable here, obviously did a phenomenal job at Roosevelt High School in Des Moines and, uh, but it's been fun. But you're right. I mean, she, we, whatever we asked her to do, she did it. Uh, most freshmen come to college and they can't play defense, let alone spell it. And she was our best defensive player, uh, guarded the other team's best perimeter player. But uh, I think it's, you can see it this year, Dave, is even after a week of workouts, you know, they all say, well, from your freshman to sophomore year is, is a is a is a positive you're more relaxed uh you understand it a little more aj's definitely matured a lot um and has really done a great job but uh just the kind of person i mean never had to be in her life you know 4.0 student i mean whatever she does 
uh, whether it's basketball or school, uh, she's going to be ultra successful and be a great representative of what Des Moines Roosevelt, Des Moines, and, and Iowa State University is about. So we uh, need to take a quick time out and uh, hear a word from our sponsor. Chris, I'll turn it over to you. Why take the best corn in the world and make it into fuel when you could make it into whiskey? That's the question that launched Revelton, Iowa's most visible and fastest growing distillery. Owners Rob and Christy Taylor embrace the grain to glass philosophy, sourcing ingredients locally and overseeing on-premises production and bottling at their facility in Osceola. One sip and you'll agree that Revelton's handcrafted whiskeys, gins, and vodkas are the best you've ever tasted. And with the launch of their rye whiskey, made with 100% Iowa-grown rye and corn, and their new bourbon coming soon, there's more Revelton to love than ever. Iowa's own Revelton Distillery. ReveltonDistillery.com All right, Revelton and OCL is doing some great things. Um, we're back here with Coach Bill Fennelly with Iowa State Women's Basketball Program. Um, Brent Marcus. Coach, we talked a little bit before about the family atmosphere and the family that the Iowa State program has. And literally, you have family that's part of the coaching staff, and you've got some long-term staff members. Can you share with us the importance and the impact that they've had on the program? Yeah, I don't know that we have enough time for all that, Dave. But, uh, you know, my staff's been really, really good. Um, again, I go back to the family comment. Um, you know, Latoya Shave and Jody Steyer have been with me forever. Um I mean, Latoya played for me at, at Toledo. Um, I walked her down the aisle when she got married. Uh, Jody, I hired her right out of college uh, at Toledo. She came here. Uh, obviously, Billy has grown up the Iowa State uh, women's basketball. It, it, what I try and equate to people is, is a lot of the great businesses in our country are family businesses. And you know, I didn't matter what a, a restaurant or a guest. My my dad ran a gas station his whole life, and but when you have that that uh, consistency, stability, which are words that are not normal uh, in college sports, especially, uh, we've been very lucky, and I think our players see that. You know, they they understand uh, the, the connection that our staff has, uh, and it translates to the players. But uh, they been amazing people. We've been together a long time. Uh, Josh Carper, my director of operations, has been with us, you know, 13 years. Uh, it's just, it's people who love Iowa State, love Ames, uh, feel very comfortable and supported. Uh, that's And that's the one thing that probably it, it all starts with our administration. Uh, you don't keep really, really good people unless they feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what Jamie Pollard's done, uh, what Dr. Winterstein is doing now in, the, in her tenure, uh, I think it shows our staff that our program is important. Uh, they are important individually. Uh, they're important in the way they interact with our student athletes. So those things all go together. And, and you want to be, uh, wherever you are in life, you want to be in a position where, hey, I want to go to work. I love going to work. I love who I work with. Uh, I don't want to be in a situation where it's Sunday, well, even though in sports there is no such thing as a Sunday or weekend, but it's like you don't want to be in a situation where you dread going to work the next day. Um, right. You want to – I mean, our, our staff, we, we socialize together. We are connected in that way too. So um, everyone does it their own way, but for us that's the way it's worked, and we've been able to keep really, really special people and – and, and again, it goes all back to, you know, what Jamie and, and, and the leadership of his administration, Dr. Kelly Sanders, who's my immediate boss, SWA, they, they, I think they see the value of our program, but I think they see the value of the people within the program. And that's, that's been a huge piece of the puzzle for us. So you're approaching your 30th season. That's, did you think 30 years that this mm -hmm. ride would go on? And I mean, when no. you came in, there were, <laughs> there were probably more mice in Hilton Coliseum than there were fans. So and to see it filled up night after night, the way that you have, I mean, did you envision this at the start? No, I, I really didn't. Um, we came here for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's home. I grew up in Iowa. My wife's from Iowa and we wanted to be close to our family. We wanted our kids to be raised here. 
Uh, secondly, I really embraced and loved the vision Gene Smith had, not just for women's basketball, but for Iowa State University. Uh, we had an ultra successful men's basketball program. So I'm thinking, all right, men are doing it. People like basketball. Um, I got hired the same, uh, actually two months after, but the same calendar year as Dan McCarney, who to this day is one of my dearest friends. And um, so I, I, I just had a sense of this was going to be a good place to try it. And I remember when we moved, I told my wife, I said, babe, if this doesn't work out, I'll go back to Davenport, Iowa, and 10 bar for my brother. We'll figure out something. I'll pay the bills, I promise. And that's kind of how it worked out. And it was just this slow evolution of growth. We we got the right kids. We got a Megan Taylor. We got, but I think the biggest thing, Dave, was we had such buy-in initially from men's basketball coaches and staff, Dan McCarney and, and Gene Smith. And that's how it started. They they almost forced women's basketball down people's throat. Like, just go, just support it. And we worked really hard in the community. You know, women's basketball fan bases, it's a lot of families, a lot of senior citizens. So we worked really hard in the local elementary schools. And uh, I, I still have, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude, but over there I have a box score, the very first game I coached at Iowa State. And I put it right outside my door, inside my door. I, I see it. I touch it every every time I leave my office as a reminder. And we had 310 people at the very first time I coached at the state. And some people say, are you sure of that? And I go, yeah, I think I thanked every single one of them personally. <laughs> um, I mean, we were so bad. We had like streamers. It looked like a murder scene. You know, like, like don't go here. The ushers didn't want to clean anywhere. Um but it, it just slowly grew. But again, you, you, that doesn't happen simply by the women's basketball teams getting better. It, it had to be, you know, Coach Floyd, Coach Eustacey, Coach McCarney, uh, Gene Smith, then Jamie Pollard of like, hey, this is important. And we had to send a message that it was important and how they worked the media for us, how they, you know, before social media, you just, it was literally grip and grin, hand to hand. The mail outs. I mean, Monday in our house was the, the kids stuff in envelopes every Monday night recruiting and marketing. And um, it, it just took a long time to do it. But uh, we wanted we wanted our little place. This We live in a football men's basketball world. That's the way it should be. They pay the bills. They pay the bills. We just wanted our little piece of how do we represent Iowa State in a positive way and be an asset to the department, to the university, and hopefully we've done that. Well, you've had some incredible players. You know, looking back over the history, just the guards have been so important, such a critical part of the program, and that ability to shoot the three, um, that, that seems to be a calling card that you came in on day one, and boom, it became the Twister Sisters, right? The the, the, the dynamic three-point shooting that really put, your, put this team over the top and, and took you to the Sweet 16. I mean – Guard play seems to be the important piece that you're always looking for. Even this year's team, right? You're surrounding Adi with a bunch of shooters. Yeah, I mean, when we first got here, that's that was kind of what we thought uh, would give us a chance. Um, when you look at the history of our team, it's not like we don't try. It's like I, I talked to Coach Campbell, and he says the hardest thing in the world to recruit are great defensive linemen and offensive linemen. There's just not many of them. It's just like – our men's basketball team has had many Marcus Pfizer's like it's a really, really hard position to get. So we had to go the other way. And so if you really look at our history, Dave, not by design, we've had two phenomenal post players and it's Angie Welly and Audie Crooks. And yeah, I wish we could have gotten someone else. We, we just yeah. couldn't get them. And so you got to figure out a way to play. So Hopefully, you know, what Angie Willie did for us and now what Audie's doing, hopefully, you know, there, there'll be another young lady that sees us as an option. Because if I'm a post player and I'm surrounded by really good guards, post players are happy. And if I'm a really good guard and I can throw the ball to Audie Crooks, I'm really happy. So it's just been a really you know, a, an odd dynamic, but it's something, too, though, that, in our sport, we don't dunk. 
um, to get the crowd involved. It's like the joke when I got here was, you know, the refs go like this. They're excited for three points. And I used to coach at Notre Dame and we recruited. It was three point Jesus. It wasn't touchdown Jesus. And the women's game, you have to be more creative, I think, a little bit. And and look, I mean, you look at what Caitlin Clark has done. Um, you know, the Steph Curry threes and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's a different marketing. It's a different way to be successful. And it's just something that where we lived and, and, and the, the availability of, of, of student athletes, that's the way we had to go. We were blessed to have Angie Welly, who's a Hall of Famer. And I'd be shocked if Artie Crooks is in the Hall of Fame someday. But uh, yeah, if, if any of your listeners have a granddaughter or niece, it's a big post player. Yeah. Send her my name. Send her name. <laughs> and I'll take it. Definitely will do. You know, back in the early 2000s, you had a, another player who was a little bit stubborn. Um, and I know this because I attended one of your practice. I, I was a coach that was switching over to boys to girls basketball in high school. And I thought, you know, I'm going to see if I can get in to watch one of Coach Fennelly's practices. So I came up and sat up. At, you were in Hilton at the time practicing. And there was a uh, freshman player by the name of Lindsey Metters who uh, was um, – I think you guys had a little bit of conflict that particular practice. And all I remember you saying – Lindsay, you know, if you're going to do this and be stubborn like this, this is going to be a long four years. And now here she's your daughter-in-law, which I think is yeah. the coolest thing. And she had an all-American <laughs> career. Yeah, and she. And we joked. She's going to be in the Iowa State Hall of Fame. Yeah, she got the scholarship for life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I, and I appreciate you bringing that up. You know, Lindsay goes in the Hall of Fame uh, this fall. Uh, was a great player for us. You're right. We we had our moments. Still do. Um, uh, but uh, just an amazing person, uh, a phenomenal daughter-in-law, phenomenal mother to two great grandkids, but uh, knew how to win, knew how to play, knew how to do things the right way. And uh, it, it, it's, it's funny how life happens. And it, I get I get teased all the time. I'm early. Mo no, I wasn't too early today, but most of the time I'm early for everything. And the reason we end found Lindsay was I was recruiting in Cal in Oregon at a big tournament. She played Southern California and I was early for a game and I saw her finish a game waiting for the next game. And I said to her, Hey, you coach, Hey, that kid can play. Tell her to keep working. She's from Southern California. He goes, you are the recruiter. I'm like, um, I live in Ames, Iowa, <laughs> Southern <laughs> California. And it was like, no, she, she doesn't care. And, that's kind of how it started, but mm. love her to death. Could not be more proud of of what she's done in her life, and it'll be a, a special moment for her and, and the family to, for her to join uh, some special special people in the Hall of Fame. So what's up with all of these warm-weather kids seeing so, so much success in Ames? You know, talk about Brett coming from Houston <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago or a month or so ago. We had TJ Tampa on, and, and Marcus, obviously, from Louisiana. I mean, those – Warm weather. I don't know what it is, but it's the, it's the people for basketball, Dave. I say we play inside, so I don't I don't worry about the weather. <laughs> um, Brent you probably just like Marcus. Have, but the people are warm, Dave. The people yeah. are warm. You know, you know. Okay, you, who wants to live in Houston, Texas? <laughs> I mean, Come the reality on. is, I stayed here because I didn't necessarily want to move back. So I mean, it is. <laughs> like, I can't I can't hey, lie about I, it. I, I seriously, guys. I don't know how many people in my time at Iowa State I've met who work at Iowa State or work work in Ames. Their job brought them here and go, ah, we were going to stay here two, three, four years, and they're still here. Um, like it goes way back to what I said earlier. It's not the perfect place, but it the people love Iowa State. The, it's an amazing community. Um, it just, I mean, what you what what Marcus and Brent are doing right now. You know, they don't do this if they don't have an affinity for Ames and the university. I mean, what they brought to us is so much, but now they're continuing to give back. They want to be a part of it. They want to impact young people's lives and continue to, to say what Iowa State's about. And, and I've had the, the pleasure of, I deal with George a lot, and Lindsay does a golf outing for George. And it's just same things like, hey, I, I'm not from Ames, but Ames is part of my home. And that's what Marcus is doing, whether it's Vegas or Houston or whatever. 
you don't eliminate those people. Like I tell people all the time, I was born in Davenport, Iowa. My home is Ames. And you, you don't forget the people that change your life. And as a young student athlete, you come here as 18 years old and you leave at 22, 23. There's a lot of things that happen in those five years. And some of it you want to forget. And, and, and like, oh, my God, that, that I, I, I didn't want to do that. But a lot of it is those people shape my life and turn these guys into the men they are now, turn the Lindsay Metters into the, the mother and professional she is now. Those are things that a collegiate atmosphere can only do for you. And we're blessed that uh, hopefully we're doing it sort of the right way at Iowa State. Well, here it is, June, and I tell you what, I cannot wait for the basketball season to get started. I'm sure, Coach, you are as well with summer practices going on. It's been a pleasure to have you on t uh, tonight's show, and we wish you all the best uh, in this upcoming season. Here are your 30th at Iowa State. Thank you, guys. It's been an honor to do it. Marcus, Brent, thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done, continue to do for Iowa State. True legends. Um, Iowa State's not in the place they are today without the two of you. And that I'm being dead honest because I've I've seen the other side of it. So mm -hmm. thank you guys. Appreciate y'all. Go Cyclones. All right. That's another episode in the side of the storm. We'll see you around next time.